Gail, coming to you, I read a statistic recently about the number, the proportion of African Americans who live within, I think, a quarter of a mile of some toxic site, whether it's a, a factory or a refinery. You have a huge refinery in your district, in your town, Richmond, the Chevron Refinery. What are the institutional and policy underpinnings for where we locate these factories, where we locate people, who lives there, who has a voice, and whose health matters? Yes, well, we do. Richmond is home to the second largest oil refinery in California, the Chevron Richmond Oil Refinery, which, um, you know, causes a host of problems, including a massive fire in 2012 that sent 15,000 local residents to be treated at local hospitals. Um, we are suing Chevron, the city of Richmond, and we are forcing regulation. Um, the refinery was actually there before the city incorporated. Um, where uh, It's clear that refineries locate in low-income areas. Um, the environmental injustice is very clear. You know, the, the people around the refinery are largely people of color, uh, totally low income. And uh, it's, there hasn't been a refinery um, built in the, in the United States since 1976. That's because communities don't want them in their neighborhood. And, and rightly so. I mean, they are a harm and they are a risk for the community. So Chevron exists in Richmond. They, they're there. So it is up to incumbent on us to hold them accountable. The underpinnings are that uh, it's a corporate culture. It's a corporate culture that puts its profit, profits first over human needs, over the community that exists around them. Um, Chevron makes anywhere from 25 to $30 billion in profits a year. And people living around the refinery, people throughout Richmond, we're a working class community. We have a large poverty rate. We have um, massive amounts of um, challenges. But we've learned to, um, because of our progressive movement, uh, it's, you know, many, of, many talked about the power of, of movements and mobilizations. Um, we have been able to change that. But you also have to have people in office that are willing to stand side by side with the community. And that's what the Richmond Progressive Alliance, which is a great organization that I helped co-found, and it runs progressive candidates every year and every two years. And I was elected um, in 2004, in 2006, in 2010, uh, re-elected as mayor. So, um, and it was done without a penny of corporate money because we wanted to make sure that that we stood, you know, those of us who, who run as RPA candidates, that we are making it clear to people we stand with mm. you. We stand for your needs and not for the corporate needs. For, unfortunately, we still have office holders in Richmond that are in the pocket of Chevron, Chevron friendly uh, candidates. And Chevron has put countless uh, dollars into our electoral arena every year, millions of dollars. We, some of us have been able to win anyway. You know, we go door to door. We build that movement. They have, Chevron has had some successes as well. Um, but uh, this is the institutional problem that mm. we have nationwide, worldwide, the corporate culture polluting our air, in the case of oil companies, but also polluting our democracy. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we have big banks after us now in Richmond. Um, so because we have this eminent domain program that we want to uh, help our homeowners. Mm -hmm. But we're going to keep pushing back, and we do it together. We do it with a movement, a grassroots movement of people.